In this video, we will go through your daily routine. Your daily routine is a series of movements that target the muscles from the head to the toes. We'll perform one set of each movement. Think of it as an elongated warm up. This routine would be great to do on the days that you don't have a workout or as you build your fitness capacity. If later on in the day, say you do a morning workout, later on in the day you feel like you need to do a little bit more movement, you could go through your daily routine, either part of it or all of it, as an additional bonus of intentional movement. As we go through this series, you'll find that you don't need much space. Some of the movements I'll be moving across the screen, if you don't have that much space, that's perfectly fine. You could do everything stationary. You'll also want some solid surface to sit on. And with this surface, it is ideal that you'd be able to have your feet up off the ground. So that could be something, a high bench or a chair or some surface that you put firm cushions on where it is again, elevating you so your legs are hanging. If that is not an option, that's okay. You'll just see for some of the movements, it's nice to not have to pull that leg up before performing some of the seated movements. You'll also want either, again, that solid surface or a wall, a support. And um, some of those movements, you may need some support at the beginning and later on not. But again, some solid surface, a wall would be perfect for that support. And then lastly, we have a, a portion of the daily routine that is ground based or where you're laying on some form of a flat surface. So the ground would be fine if you're able to get off the, down to the ground and up off the ground, or if you're at home, you could use a firm bed, a firm couch. If you're at the gym and there's a table, that would be great too. So something that you feel comfortable laying down on and getting up off of. And if that's not something that you're able to do yet, that's perfectly fine. You can omit that portion of the ground-based segment and just know that as your strength and fitness capacity increases, that that will be a component that we'll want to add in. All right, so from here, I'll name the movement and perform it. Talk about what makes good form, where we wanna feel that mus the muscles activate, as well as maybe some common compensations, ways that the body might try to perform the movement that isn't optimal, and then we'll perform the movement together. We'll start off with our walk in place. For this movement, you'll want upright posture where the core is active, muscles in the upper back are active. We'll go opposite arm, opposite leg, which helps with the counterbalance. I'd recommend finding a stationary object to fix your eyes on so that you are able to help balance and stabilize while switching from leg to leg. As you perform this movement, we wanna make sure that gravity is not pulling you downward. And so that's where we want that upright posture, but we also don't want to overextend. So just be aware of where your shoulders are at, your head and your eyes, as you're switching your stance. As I mentioned, we want this opposite arm, opposite leg movement pattern. Occasionally, when we try to think about where we are in space, opposite arm, opposite leg, we can start to get kind of fumbled up and begin going the same arm, same leg. Most of us naturally walk, walk or move opposite arm, opposite leg. It's just when we bring that awareness to it, we can kind of get jumbled. So if you're having a hard time with that, I'd recommend starting with one leg up or almost up, opposite arm, and then think about switching them both. So again, if you find yourself suddenly going same arm, same leg, pause, reset, and again, start with that opposite arm, opposite leg. So we'll go ahead and put 20 seconds on the clock. We'll perform this movement together. Next, we have our reach out, pull in. We'll start with palm down position, twist and pull to a neutral position where palms are facing each other. As we reach out, we wanna make sure that we're not overreaching. That again, we have that upright posture and then we're driving our elbows back. And I like to pretend I'm driving into a wall. So even though I'm not continuing to move further back, I'm still generating more and more tension by sliding my shoulder blades together and pretending that here I am truly driving into a wall. And so if you're having a hard time doing that, you could even lean up against a wall and feel that elbow drive backwards. 
You could even do a couple repetitions like this where you feel those muscles activate. So reach out, drive back, feel that wall, and then squeeze your shoulders. So again, it can be pretty easy to keep a rounded position and pull here. So we wanna think about shoulders back as we hit that wall. Let's go ahead and get set up in our upright position. We'll start with the palms down, again, rotating to neutral, and we'll perform this for 20 seconds. movement we have is your reach up pull down. We'll want to maintain an upright position and a neutral spine. Palms will be facing forward, we'll twist pull down into a neutral position where they now are facing each other. As we reach up we'll twist again to that palms forward, twisting down, pulling elbows to the hips. We want to make sure as you're reaching up that you're not compensating through your low back or upper back to get into this position. So if you're unable to reach straight up without arching your back, then that means you don't quite have the full shoulder mobility yet, and we'll work on that. So what I'd encourage you to do, so if this is the only way you can get into this upright position, go ahead and reach out at an angle, or again, everything in your spine is neutral. And this may look different person to person. It may look different over the course of your program. So you might find that you really have to start here to be in a neutral spine. And then over time, you can change the path of this reach up, pull down. So again, palms facing forward, whatever that might look like, twisting to a neutral, driving your elbows down towards your hips where you feel your lats engage, and even though there's no resistance on this movement, pretend that you're pulling a weight down so you can generate that tension. Just like with our other shoulder movements, we wanna make sure when you're reaching that there's no shrugging, that the shoulders stay down as the arms reach up. So that would be our reach up, pull down. We'll go ahead and put 20 seconds on the clock. Go ahead and start in that upright position. We'll go palms forward, and when you're ready, we'll begin pulling down. Next up, we have the front and side raises. We'll perform this movement in a thumbs up position, meaning if our thumbs were up, you don't have to actually put them up, but that they would be facing up as opposed to facing each other or facing down. So thumbs up position, we're gonna alternate between a front raise and a side raise. The goal here will be to aim for a parallel position and that as we get to this parallel position, there's no shrugging in through the shoulders that we're able to, again, not be in this position, but to keep the shoulders the same height, meaning we're moving through that ball and socket joint of the shoulder. So go ahead, I'll have you stand up, get in position, feet at that hip width base, everything will be active in through the spine, and for 20 seconds, we'll go ahead and alternate between our front and side raises. Next, we have hands open and close. Just like it sounds, we're gonna open up the hands as wide as we can, and then we'll close them by making a fist. While we perform this movement, think about that full range of motions so that we're not keeping our hands in a semi-bent position throughout. So all the way open, again, as far as you can, close and make a fist. While we do this, we wanna move slowly. It can be really easy to just open and close and almost rely on that momentum. So be very intentional with that movement, control it, all the way open and back together. If you're able to, I'll have you bring your hands up at a 90 degree, so we'll get a little bit of extra 
uh, upper arm activation, shoulder activation, but if you need to, and if your hands are getting tired, you could do this one down by your side. So let's go ahead and get set up for our hands open and close, and we'll perform this movement for 20 seconds. Next, we have your wrist circles. And again, you're welcome to be in this arm bent position, but if you need to relax those arms down by your side, you sure can. As we go through our wrist circles, we're going to move through the movement controlled and slowly. And one thing to watch out for as we do this is we wanna make sure that we're not moving our forearms. And so as, as we do this, something to be aware of, you can kind of squeeze your arms together. If you're down by your side, it's easier to not move your forearms, um, but we want to make sure that the movement is truly occurring at the wrist joint as opposed to moving your wrist, but because the forearms or elbows are allowing some of that movement to occur in different joints. So we'll get set up in that upright position, arms either by your side or bent in that arm bent position and squeeze. We'll go 10 seconds one direction and then we'll switch directions 10 for the other. Again, slow controlled movements and begin. Next up are our shoulder circles. This time we will keep our arms down by our sides. We'll shrug up, rotate back, and then round forward. Just like with our wrist circles, for 10 seconds we'll perform the movement one direction, and then we'll reverse that direction. And likewise, we'll move controlled so that we're not just dropping our shoulders and letting gravity kind of help pull us into that down position. So we'll move controlled and then slowly so that you can really feel each of the muscles take its turn to pull that shoulder back and then again forward. So go ahead, we'll get set up in our upright position. Arms will be relaxed down by your side. We'll go 10 seconds one direction and then we'll reverse it. Next up is head side to side. We're gonna shift our focus here to the muscles that attach to the head and the neck. We'll look side to side, moving very controlled so that we're not forcing this movement, but allowing the muscles of the neck to control that look side to side. It is important to remember not to shrug or tense up while you're performing this movement. And sometimes that can happen if you've had a previous neck injury or dealt with reoccurring neck pain, is that maybe you're a little bit nervous to even look side to side. And so then we shrug, we get that extra muscle tension and then it fuels that, that previous injury or any lingering inflammation. So think about shoulders are down and don't force this movement. So if you're only able to go say 45 degrees to 45 degrees versus that full 90 looking at one wall, 90 degrees to the other wall. If you're only able to go that, that short arc, that's perfectly fine and a really good starting point that we are going to be able to build upon, but we wanna do that slowly. One thing to point out as far as a compen common compensation would be to make sure that we're not rotating in through our torso, that everything else is locked in place, that we know the movement is occurring at the neck joint. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and set our timer for 20 seconds, have you get in position, making sure the shoulders are down, and we'll look side to side.
Next up, we have head up and down. Just like it sounds, we'll look upward and then downward. Again, controlling this movement pattern, just like we did with the head side to side. Before we begin this movement of looking up and down, it's important to remember to retract the head back so we're not in a forward head posture. So retract so everything is in a nice straight line before you look up and before you look down. And if you want, you can, you can try out the difference on this. So if you are in this forward head leaning position, it's going to be much trickier to look up because everything is already being pushed forward. Versus if you put yourself into that retracted position, you're able to pivot on some of those upper vertebrae and you'll be able to look much, much higher because everything is now stacked and in an optimal position to look upward and stretch out those neck muscles. So just like all the other movements, we really want to make sure that this one stays controlled, that we're not flinging our head back or letting gravity pull us down, but that we're controlling, especially that end range of motion to strengthen as well as stretch the muscles. So let's go ahead and get set up. We'll put 20 seconds on the clock for our head up and down. Next up, we have our single leg balance with support. For this movement, which is a hold, you'll want to maintain a neutral spine, meaning everything will be stacked from that ankle bone up through the knee, hip, shoulder, and ear. Go ahead and lift your leg as high as you can without moving through the spine. So if as you bring your leg up, you feel things collapse forward, then maybe you've brought your leg too high or at the very least you need to reposition your spine. So we want to come up into a single leg balance position without sacrificing that neutral spine and then you're welcome to use that support as needed. If you are using support, go ahead and put, whether it's a low object or a wall, go ahead and put your hand on the support, pick up the leg in between the support and then have that down leg. That way you're supported on both sides and that you're not supporting, supporting, and then leaning. So again, we wanna be in a neutral spine from the front. That means our shoulders and our hips stay even as we bring that leg up. And as I mentioned, you can choose how high you lift this leg. And if your body is unable to stay in that neutral position, then it means the leg is lifted too high for the time being. As everything gets stronger, you'll be able to lift your knee up higher and higher without support, and that would be a sign that things are getting stronger and more stable. So we're gonna perform the single leg balance with support. Go ahead and get set up, find your support. We'll perform it for 20 seconds on one side, and then we'll switch directions. Next up we have your calf raises. For this movement, we will go up on your tippy toes and control back down. It's important to remain in an upright posture so that the movement is vertical versus leaning forward, tippy toes, and then coming back down. So upright posture, use that support as needed, controlling the range of motion as high as you can, and then again, controlling back down so that we're not slamming our heels onto the ground as we end each repetition. For this movement, let's go ahead and get set up. 
Use your support if needed. Start in that upright position. We'll put 20 seconds on the clock. From here, we'll wrap up your standing segment with one more bout of walk in place. So we'll go ahead and we'll put 20 seconds on and we'll finish up this segment of the daily routine with some walking. Mm -hmm. 